let's start by looking at the strategy for how to actually show those trig derivatives. And in this example, we're going to show that the derivative of tangent x is equal to secant squared x. So we're going to start by, we want to calculate the derivative of tangent x. And we're actually going to prove this. So, you know, normally we don't show all of this work, but we're just kind of interested in seeing how, how does this formula for the derivative of tangent come about. And so our strategy, and it's going to be a very similar strategy for all of these trig formulas here, all these trig derivatives, is to first rewrite our trig function in terms of either sine or cosine. And it turns out they all can be written in terms of either sine or cosine. So those are sort of our, our building block trig functions. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Secant is 1 over cosine. And then cotangent is cosine over sine. So sine and cosine are like the building blocks. We can rewrite all of the other functions in terms of them. All right, so we're going to do that for tan x. So let's rewrite tangent x as sine over cosine. So sine x over cosine x. And we want to do the derivative of this now. So we're going to have a bunch of steps here. And at the very end, we should end up with secant squared. And that's going to prove this, prove this formula. Normally, we just, we just have these memorized. But we're kind of going through the work to see where these formula actually come from. Um, all right, so when we look at this, we have this rewritten. We have a fraction, and it's sine over cosine. So there's these two functions of x. There's an x term on the top. There's an x term on the bottom. And then we're dividing. So whenever that happens, we generally need to use quotient rule. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to use some quotient rule here. So let's actually implement that quotient rule. How we do it. Can just remember the formula for quotient rule um, but generally how we can think of it is we write down our fraction as a product so top times the bottom and then you just do two copies of that top times the bottom in the first copy you apply the derivative to the first part and then in the second copy you apply the derivative to the second part there we put a minus sign in between and then draw a big, uh, a big fraction and we square the original denominator. So our denominator was cosine x. We're going to square that. So there's quotient rule. All right, so what's the derivative of sine and what's the derivative of cosine? Well, we need to know those. So derivative of sine is cosine and derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we've gotten it to a point where it just comes down to knowing the derivative of sine and cosine. So what's the derivative of sine? We said it was cosine x. And then we have a cosine x right next door. Then we're subtracting, and we have a sine x. And the derivative of cosine x was negative sine x. And this is all over our cosine x squared. Um, all right, so. I mean, we're done differentiating, but we haven't gotten to the point where this is clearly equal to secant squared. It's, it's really not even close. It's just cosines and sines. It's this big fraction. This doesn't look anything like secant squared. So we need to try and do some, some more rewriting to get this closer to what, what we want, secant squared. So we have some cosine terms being multiplied. So we can rewrite that as cosine squared x. We have two copies of negative sine being multiplied here. So negative sine times negative sine is positive sine squared. So we can fill that in. And then in the denominator, we're not going to do anything with that. So we'll just leave that as cosine x squared. Now we could take that little 2, put it on the cosine there to indicate cosine squared. But it's actually going to be helpful to kind of leave it like this. So we'll, we'll keep it keep it here. Um, all right, so it's looking better. It's a little little easier to read now, but still nowhere near this secant squared. And the idea is there's another trig identity that shows up quite a bit involving sine, sine squared and cosine squared. And you, you may have seen it before. 
um, let's use theta here for it says sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one so that's one of our special another one of our special trig identities so if we re, if we use that this entire numerator here is just one let me put it over here one over cosine x squared so that's getting closer still not there um, we need a secant squared. Right now we have 1 over cosine x squared. But we can actually rewrite this fraction. And we can rewrite it as the fraction 1 over cosine x, that whole fraction squared. Now why can we do that? Well, that 1, it's almost like there's a hidden squared on there. And when we have a fraction and the entire numerator is being raised to an exponent, and the entire denominator is being raised to that same exponent, what we can do, it's almost like factoring off that exponent. So we can kind of factor off that exponent of, of 2, that squared exponent. It's just one of our exponent rules that allow us to, if we have the numerator term being squared and the denominator term being squared. It's just like squaring the whole fraction. And now, 1 over cosine x squared, well, that 1 over cosine x should be recognizable. So 1 over cosine is equal to secant. So we can use our one more trig, trig property here. That says 1 over cosine is equal to secant. And if we fill that in, we get secant x squared. And normally we can write it in the, the standard way, which is putting the, the exponent on the actual trig name there. So we can write that as secant squared x. And that proves it. So we actually did the heavy lifting here and showed that the derivative of tan is secant squared. Now, normally, and when we're just doing derivatives, um, normally we wouldn't show all of this. Normally, we'd just have that derivative memorized. But it's, it's kind of interesting to see that if we know the derivative of sine and cosine, we can sort of work out what all of those other derivatives are going to be. So let's try another one. Let's try derivative of secant. We're going to show that the derivative of secant is secant times tan. So we're going to start with this side, and we're going to do a bunch of steps, and then eventually we'll get secant times tan at the end. All right, so let's kind of start off the same way. We're going to differentiate the secant function. And secant, we can rewrite secant in terms of sine or cosine, in term, and it's actually 1 over cosine. So let's fill that in. Derivative is 1 over cosine. So we're, instead of differentiating secant x, we're going to differentiate 1 over cosine. Now you might be looking at this and thinking this is a fraction, so we're going to have to do quotient rule again. And we could. So you could per perfectly do that. and You'd get, get the right answer. But if we look at this fraction, there's no exponent. There's no variable on the top. It's just a constant. So normally when we have a fraction and there's a variable only on either the top or the bottom, but not on both, when we only have a, a variable, say, in the denominator, um, it's usually helpful to just try and rewrite the function or rewrite the fraction. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to rewrite this using a negative exponent because the variable part there is in the denominator. So instead of thinking of this as 1 over cosine, instead, we're going to think of it as cosine x raised to the negative 1 power. Not to be confused with, this isn't the inverse cosine function. So it's not the inverse cosine function. This is the reciprocal of cosine. This is cosine x raised to the power negative 1. So we're just using a negative exponent here to rewrite our fraction. And when we do this, 
you might recognize that this is a composite function. This is a composition of two functions. We have our inner function inside the parentheses there, which is cosine x. And then we have our outer function here, which is the power function. So our outer function here is raised is the power function raised to the negative 1. So when we have a composition, when we have an inner and an outer function, the way we, way we handle that is with chain rule. How do we differentiate? We use chain rule. All right, so we're going to use chain rule to differentiate this. The outer function is a power function, so we start by differentiating the outer, outer function. So we bring down that exponent, negative 1, bring down our power, keep what was inside the parentheses the same, so we keep our inner function the same, so it stays cosine x in there. And then our exponent was negative 1, we subtract 1 from using the power rule, so that takes us down to negative 2. And then we take the term that was inside the parentheses, cosine x, and we multiply by its derivative. So this is chain rule, right here. This is where the where the, the chain rule magic happens, right in this step. Okay, now what's the derivative of cosine? Well, that is negative sine. So we have that negative one in front. We have our cosine x raised to the negative two, and then the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. So you can see we get it to a point where it just comes down to knowing the derivative of either sine or cosine. And that's it, we're done differentiating, but you can see we're not really in the right format here. We wanna show, we ultimately, we wanna get it down to where this is secant times tan. And we're not, not really there yet, still in terms of sine and cosine. So if we look, we have a negative exponent. That was good for differentiating, but usually it's helpful to rewrite it back as a fraction instead of leaving the negative exponent. So, and then we have a double negative here, actually. We have a negative sine and then this negative one in front. So this is gonna become positive. So if we rewrite this cosine x raised to the negative two, we can rewrite that as one over cosine x um, squared. And then we have times sine x right next door. We can break this fraction up then we have one over cosine x squared, we can break this up into two separate fractions. So we can write it as one over cosine x times one over cosine x. Break it up into two fractions like that. And then we still have our sine x. And if we're looking now, we're starting to see things that might be recognizable, especially like this one over cosine that's secant. So this one over cosine here, we could rewrite that as secant. And then this sine times one over cosine, well, let's just sine over cosine. So we can just put the sine on the numerator there. So this is just sine over cosine, and that's tangent. So kind of fun. And in a pinch, if you forget, you know, if you forget what one of these derivatives um, is, so if you forget what the derivative of tangent is, um, if you remember what the derivative of sine and cosine is and you remember your derivative rules, you can kind of figure it out. Um, so we're just kind of using some of our derivative rules like product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, things like that to prove some of these Trig, trig derivatives here. Um, all right, so that's gonna that's gonna do it. The the other trig functions we didn't do all of them, but if you wanted to do cosecant, it's gonna be feel pretty similar to what we did for secant. And if you're gonna prove cotangent, well, it'd be pretty similar to what we did for tangent. So kind of kind of fun to go through those. All right, so next we're gonna look at 
some of our inverse trig functions. So we'll see how to handle those next.